Okay, this is going to be a simple demonstration of um, getting a two-way netcat communication happening um, in Backtrack. I've got a Backtrack machine here that I'm running, and on my Backtrack machine I've got a terminal window open right here, okay, and I've got a remote desktop connection to a Windows XP client in the lab, all right, and let's take a look to see if I have netcat on this client yet. So I'm going to go to my computer and I'll go in the C drive and I should have placed netcat into the Windows folder. I did. And if you, um, for the students in my lab, if you don't have netcat on my website, there I have links that you, where you can go and download netcat. There it is, nc.exe, right? Let's uh, show our file extensions. Uh, view Okay, so you can see there it is, nc.exe, and it's in my Windows folder, so I should be able to access it from my command prompt, and so that's what I'll do now. If you're in my lab, in my classroom, I have nc.exe located in the Tools folder, too, on your XP client. So I'm going to run command prompt, and hopefully you can see this. If you can't, I'll try to make it a little bit bigger for you. Okay. Click OK, and I'll save those settings for the future. So it's a little bit bigger. All right, and make that a little smaller. OK, and I'm going to run um, Netcat on here. So I'll say NC, and I'm going to have it listen verbosely on port, let's say, 2222. All right, and hit Enter and it says that netcat is listening on port 2222 and we can um, see if now we can make a connection to it from our backtrack machine so from our backtrack machine i've got a terminal window here so i've got two clients here windows client running netcat and my own machine with netcat and now i'll say netcat to 192.168.4.1 and we'll try to establish a connection. I've got to give it a port number, 2222. And it says that it looks like it's trying to connect. All right, let's test it out. If we have opened up a connection between the two, we should be able to type hello. And sure enough, there it is from the Backtrack client, from the Backtrack machine. I can send a message. This is a Oops, this is a chat, right? And from the remote desktop in the Windows client, I can um, say hello back. Hello back. All right, so there's a two-way uh, communication setup using Netcat between, a, um, between two uh, clients. One listener, and uh, the listener is our server essentially. So when we set up Netcat on this um, XP client uh, listening, then it becomes the server. And then running Netcat from here, this becomes the client. And we've established two way communications and we can send text back and forth. Okay, it's time for the next test. So what I did was is I hit Control C to um, exit out of the netcat connection and then I cleared my terminal screens on both systems and then I installed I did a um, app-get install gedit so I could run geditor and I'm gonna run it right now G gedit and I'll background the process okay and I'm gonna just type a sample text file here this is a sample text file. And I'll do File, Save As, and I'll save it to the root document as test.txt and save. All right, and I'll close that out. OK, so now on my desktop, I should have this file. There it is, test.txt right so what I want to do is I want to use netcat to transfer that file 
to our Windows machine that we set up. So, um, so we're going to try to transfer this file, test.txt, to our Windows XP client, and we'll see if that can, we can get that to work. So on the XP client, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a netcat listener again, netcat server. So I'll say nc dash listen verbosely on port 2222. Okay. And I'm also going to say let's output anything that we receive there into a file called file share.txt. Okay. So that looks good. I'll hit enter. And so it's listening. It's the same command as before, listening on 222, but anything that connects is going to be outputted to a file called fileshare.txt. So now, on my backtrack machine, what we're going to do is we're going to send that file. So we're going to connect with netcat to our IP address. All right, that's our IP address on port 2222, let's say. We just pick the port at random and that's what it is. All right, except what we're going to do is we're going to input into that netcat connection our file test.txt. All right, and we'll, we'll run that. And you can see here that there has been a connection. And so the question is, did we receive the file though? Okay, file share.txt. So if it worked and the file was transferred, we should be able to look in our documents, okay, and find that file. So we'll go here, my documents, I'm not seeing it. Where would that file be? All right. Documents and settings. And there it is. File share txt. I had to go into the C drive, documents and settings, the name of my user, which in this case is Joe Shadow, and there's file share txt. Let's see if it worked. And sure enough, there it is. So the file share worked.